Another Bulletproof for BJJ Podcast. I am JT, I wear the hat, and that's Joey, he's got the hair. That's right, We at the cafe this morning the lady said, are you brothers? Kind of look similar. I said, yeah, but we used to really look the same, didn't we? It was, we had the same haircut. Same haircut, same facial hair, you similar were slimmer. Weight, similar weight class. Yeah. Um, then you got hench. Yeah, I got heavier. I got fucking this windswept sort of... <laughs> Eastern suburbs. I'm, maybe I'd do the yachting. <laughs> Perhaps. Maybe Play not. rugby at school. <laughs> yeah, polo, if you will. <laughs> I just hang out with uh, Western Eat a few Sydney. dicks on weekends. <laughs> 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 just, uh, yeah, there, there has been a change over time. I, people say I've gotten shorter. It's actually like I've gotten <laughs> wider, but yeah, still the same height. Hey, can I got a, got a cool piece of feedback on the show yesterday? Please. From, uh, from Kim, uh, one of the boys at Gracie Balmain. Shout out to Kim, who uh, listens to the show. And he said, hey, bro. I, I was like, going, I, I got to class late. Classic Joey move. And uh, terrible. got to class late. I was going around. And he goes, hey, bro, I listened to, I've been listening to the podcast. Man, that episode about um, when you got beaten up and the, the you know. And that, yeah. he's like, that was, um, man, that was awesome. And I was like, oh, wow, thanks. He goes, bro, that, that was so funny. Oh, and I was brutal. like. Oh, thanks, bro. It was one of the most traumatic experiences of my life. <laughs> He's like, oh, no. Nah. I mean, the bit where you uh, like where you got the money back and you met with the guy and the gangster thing at McDonald's. And I was like, oh, yeah, that was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that bit where you got stomped, I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, bro, hilarious. You piss yourself. Oh, Shit. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's brutal, though, right? Like, because in life, like, uh, what do they say? The, the, the thin line between tragedy and comedy is like, Tragedy is when it happens to you. Comedy is when it happens to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, this is yeah. This is the nature of things. Actually, no, I, I'm, I'm kidding. I was like, that's that's cool. It's I'm cool. glad you got some fun from that. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. It's nice to meet people who uh, who listen in. Shout out to all y'all. But um, today we are talking about BJJ in your 30s because for a lot of you out there, and we know this, uh, you're either about to hit the 30 mark or you're well and truly there. And there's some, some of you are beyond. Some of you beyond, yeah. For we sure. know the majority of our listeners are between twenty five and forty five. Yeah, correct. And then, of course, we have older and we have younger. younger. But that's that's the that's the majority. The majority, and it's it's got some downside. That's that's the thing. Don't get me wrong. I I think there's plenty of good things about being in your thirties. I'm no longer there. I'm fucking forty. Oh yeah, Holy bro. Shit. People on, are like, what the fuck would you know, old man? Yeah, shut up, grey yeah. beard, you idiot. Shut up, Gandalf. Do you remember um, that scene? Is it Talladega Nights? Where, um, is, is that the one where Will Ferrell's kids and they're at dinner and his wife and kids and then he's got his father and the kids are just like, sh- like ripping the grandfather to shut up, old man. Like they're just highly disrespectful. Be, yes. That's a fucking classic. I can't remember the lines, but I just remember being like, this is an outrageous scene. It's brutal. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and the wife is like backing the kids. Yeah. <laughs> just getting into him. Um, actually, the bit I remember from that is when he's trying to make a prayer to baby Jesus, and he said, "Dear sweet thirty, you know, <laughs> like fifteen pound baby Jesus, uh, <laughs> I'm in the front row. Jesus is playing Leonard Skinner. <laughs> I'm real hammered. <laughs> he's he's saying grace for dinner. <laughs> it's a fucking great scene. Um, the thing about it is this: uh, you get to your thirties, and maybe you've done some jujitsu. Maybe you're in your thirties and you've just started jujitsu." And Joey and I were talking about how this can be a different perspective. If you've already got like five years of jujitsu under your belt and you hit your 30s, it can feel different. But what is common to most people in their 30s is you've had some injuries. They could be jujitsu related. Maybe you did a bit of footy back in the day or baseball or something. You got a bit of a dicky shoulder. Baseball, I like that. Bad knee. Yeah. You know how it is. I like that, yeah. <laughs> but that's the Slipped thing. Slipped over at the Home Depot. <laughs> yep. Maybe yeah. you're playing ice hockey. Right on. Right, you right. feel me? That's yeah, what we right. do. Or maybe, you know, college wrestling. You know yeah. how we do. Lacrosse. Lac- Very popular. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Maybe you're shooting some hoops. Brooklyn. Bro, what are you talking about? Shout out. <laughs> I always <laughs> shot hoops. I'm a kid of the 90s. Who didn't shoot hoops in the 90s? I didn't shoot hoops, bro. You fucking love Michael Jordan in the 90s, you fucking cretin. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you watched The Last Dance, though. Yeah, I watched that. Of course you I collected did. the cards. Oh, oh yeah, I collected the cards, but I'm, I didn't play be- the sport. I'm become a millionaire off those cards. <laughs> you got the Shaq rookie card. I got the Michael Jordan retirement card. <laughs> Flair Ultra. <laughs> Flair Ultra. So good. <laughs> <laughs> I was there at Card Shack, man. I had the I had the Beckett. 
The like oh, yeah. the, the book that told you how much a Ken Griffey Jr. Oh, yeah. baseball card. Yo, holy shit. This card was worth three dollars forty. Now it's worth six dollars seventy. Yeah. I'm blowing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Collect the card arbitrage when you're like nine years old. So injury. It's a thing. So you might have some pre existing injuries coming into jujitsu. You might have done jujitsu a while. You might have accumulated a, a few injuries along the way, but you cannot deny injury is a part of the game in your thirties. It's a reality now that perhaps you were obli- you could have been oblivious to it in your twenties. You could have maybe copped some injuries, or maybe you just didn't. Maybe you just kind of got through, had some niggles here and there, but nothing that was ever, you know, stopped you in your tracks, prohibited you from doing what you wanted to do. Whereas in your thirties you're going to come up against some shit that you can't just ignore. Yeah. You know, there's those, those kind of party memes where it's got me in my 20s and it's got someone like sleeping on a gutter, like passed out. And it's got me in my 30s, can't get comfortable in a proper bed. Like sleep's wrong and the neck's all f***ed, right? Like yeah. your tolerance you become for a any kind flower. of... Yeah. Your tolerance for any kind of physical stress is lower. So even though in the 20s you would have done something which would have written you off, you just pop up the next day like Let's just do it again. Yeah. You know, Sunday sessions. It's not enough to go drinking. After a night on the booze. Yeah. yeah, (laughs) Not enough to go drinking on Friday and Saturday. Let's just follow it up on Sunday and still try and turn up to work on Monday. Yeah. You cannot do that. And then go train hard Monday night. Yeah. Smash everyone. It's very different. And why are we talking about these things? Because we all know it, but no one's saying it. You know, like we we all kind of like oh. we need to be folks need to be aware of it. Yeah, you want to be. You we reflect be honest. on this shit a lot, but yeah, I think people need to like be like, oh yeah, it's kind of that because here's the, a lot of things happen, and like I say, I you hear this a lot from people um, in their thirties, and this is in the gym or in jujitsu where they they cop an injury. Yep, and they're like, oh, f- it's just I'm getting older, and. I've actually thought about this a lot. I, I don't necessarily, like, yeah, you are getting older, but I don't think the, the implication there is that you, your body is now older and you're just, more fragile. just breaks. That's kind of, yeah. And I actually don't think that's the case for the most part. I think that what the case is, is that you've had like three decades on the earth, mm-hmm. which has accumulated some wear and tear. Yeah. And that wear and tear hasn't reared its head until now. Yeah, it's kind of... So, yeah, so now what you're experiencing is perhaps the result of previous choices. Accumulation. Yeah, it's not the fact that you're now more fragile. It's just the fact that you got away with a bunch of shit that you now don't get away with. That's right. If we're actually looking at like the fragility thing, if if you have been looking after yourself, or even if even if maybe you've, you've been a bit kind of like you haven't been doing all the right things, but you should be at your strongest now. Like you yeah. should be, I'm not going to say best athleticism because that depends on what you've been doing with your time. Sure. But being on the planet for longer means you should now have more strength, a bit more muscle, like all those things. If you've been doing the things. But for the best part, we know that kind of people get in their 20s, depending on where they're living in the world, they're working, um, maybe not as much time for looking after the self, priority on the money, get the house, have the kids, do the things. And then, oh shit, okay, I got a bit, a little bit more free time now. Kids are in daycare or kids are at school. I could go, I could go do jujitsu. I could go do something, right? But you are forgetting about all that accumulation and other stuff too. And the difficulty is your jujitsu instructor is not going to say to you, you're about to get a surgery level injury in the next six months. But that could happen. Or even the next two years. That's not a sales pitch. But you've got to keep it in mind because why are we bringing this up? You need to have strategies to deal with this shit. If you don't, then you're going to be weighed, measured, and found wanting. So oh. what, are, what are we going to do? Weighed, measured, and found. Tell me more about that. Oh, it's a, it's a line from a film, actually. It said, you have been weighed, you have been measured, and you have been found wanting wanting as in you ain't got it when you need it when's the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago other best time start today Mm. so cryptic you know no it's one of those things it's that it's not often that someone goes oh when's the last time you had a major injury i mean people like to talk shit oh my dicky knee my bad elbow whatever but generally people don't do an ingrown toenail a few months back it's pretty bad oh just cut the toe off no um you need to have 
a therapist, physical therapist. Yep. You might need a you might need a psychiatrist for all I know, but you got jujitsu for that, so don't worry about it. It's cheaper. Um, making sure you got somebody to consult when your body gets banged up. Niggles start to become more than niggles, don't they? Yeah, you something that you could have once ignored, you can no longer ignore. Mm. And yeah, a niggle that's like, oh, it's here for a week, oh, it's here for a month, ongoing, you got to get that shit checked out. Otherwise, it'll take you out. Chronic pain. I think this is the thing that we don't um, appreciate is that <clears throat> something that, you know, yeah, maybe in the past you, you just don't pay attention to. Now, if you're trying to like hold a kid or you're trying to work your day job or you, you're, you're trying to move house – that knee problem, that meniscus issue that you just got from jiu-jitsu, that's got some serious f***ing implications. Yeah. It's really f***ing tough. And even though you might love jiu-jitsu, uh, if you can't do life, then it's kind of like a no deal. Yeah. It's a bit of a deal breaker. So the, the biggest thing that I always try to, try to do is set up some allies, whether it's a, a physio or a chiro or a massage therapist, someone who you can go see to work on your body to make sure that these things, which are maybe just minor now, don't turn into something major in the in the near distant future. Yeah, hundred. And ideally, there's someone that knows jujitsu, as we always recommend. Yeah, definitely. Someone that trains it would be cool, or at least knows the realities of the sport and can kind of give you more practical advice versus um, the doctor that's just got no fucking idea what jujitsu is and you know thinks that you're going to karate class. Yeah, of course. Uh, Kia. <laughs> Kia. Uh, now this is a this is a confronting thought for, for most of us uh, a decrease in athleticism oh don't go oh, there bro pain TRT baby just hit it that's right it's one pin a week worked for Mike what do we think what do we think about this because Mike O'Hearn by the way I'm not throwing shade on Michael Jordan <laughs> Mike T Tyson hey, which Mike yeah. are we talking about I watched that Mike Tyson clip last night I, I think I shared it with you. Oh, the one where he's going off at the guy on stage. Oh, yeah, I'll make you my pill. <laughs> yeah, I'll f you, sir. I'll f you till you, you love, love me. me. Right, oh, it's so intense. It's so brutal. And <laughs> yeah. that's Mike towards the end of his career. That's when he's Mike was... Caged animal. Not doing well. Yeah. Not doing well. <laughs> yeah. Yell out, bring out the straight jacket. Yeah, like, that's so funny. I? Yeah. All right. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that did not go well. <laughs> no one will hear it. Just yell it. <laughs> but um, no, I think... When we look at this, because uh, Joe brought up something quite relevant, because there's, I, I feel that there's two different uh, camps in this way. You have the person who has never done jujitsu, and they're they're kind of they're thirty or, or above, and they've just found it, and then you've got the person who maybe started jujitsu in their twenties, and is now thirty, and it's a different story. Talk to us about that, Joe. Yeah, so I think if you if you started in your twenties or earlier then you are accustomed to just having youth on your side and using athleticism and being, you know, like we did for a long time. We just sure. fucking going for it. And then sometime in your thirties, you're going to face this reality where it's like, Whoa, I can't, I can't play like that anymore. Mm. Maybe you can a little bit, but not every round, or maybe you just can't. Maybe like, Fuck, I, I don't have that anymore because you got other 20 year olds and shit in the class that, can play that and it's yeah. it's in your face right whereas if you're coming into your 30s chances are you haven't actually had to face this because all you know is right now yeah right but uh, i think this is i think this one is really big and, and i know i know grapplers in their 40s who are still fighting this this sort of realization and they're like no i just have to get fitter and stronger so that i can be who i was mm. and we all know that's not possible. It's very tough. You have to change your approach. Yes. Right? You have to realize that perhaps, you know, it's like, um, I can't remember which MMA fighter said it, but maybe it's just a thing that's spoken about, but like fighters that rely on power and speed early in their career often struggle later in their career because you don't naturally keep that for, forever. Yeah. Whereas the fighters who, who don't rely on those physical attributes as much yeah. do better for longer. Yes. Right. And I think that it's like, you got to know that maybe the athleticism was never part of your game, in which case you're probably not going to have to deal with this. Yes. But if it was, it definitely was for me, you're going to have to face it. And you, you either need to change the way you engage with jujitsu and the way that you, you, your expectations of yourself, 
or you're probably going to have to quit. And we do know, Jess Fraser is a great example. Yeah. She's someone that said, like, when I can't continue to do it in the way that I want to do it, that's when I stop. Yeah. You know, and I've, I've known other grapplers to say that, like, yo, this is how I like to play. And when I can't play like that, I'm out. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with that. And I think that's, I'm very much of that ilk because someone said to me, oh, you just go in the master's category. No, f*** that. Like, if, if I'm going to compete, I'll compete in adult. But that's the thing. I know well, that. Well, you still feel like that? Yeah. Even with masters being these days, Man, like- f- masters. No way. No, I don't want to, I don't want to beat up old guys. Wait, like, Josh Ingers and shit doing masters, bro. Masters one, sure. But he's also- He'll be doing masters two he, soon, I guess. No, I don't think he will. Don't reckon? I don't think he will. Well, he just won weight in absolute just I, the other day in the gi. I think and he's not a gi player. Right. Like, he's a no gi guy. Or what I'm saying here is this, like the standards are different. I'm not saying, oh, I'm better than Josh Hinger. I would beat Josh Hinger. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm not going to Worlds. I'm saying if I were to enter a, a local comp, a state comp, an Australian comp, there's barely any competitors at like male heavyweight anyway. Do you know what I mean? Masters, there'd be one other dude. You know yeah, what I mean? Like I'm, I'm not trying to get the one gold medal because I won one match. I would like to roll the best guys at the weight and just throw down. That's what I would want. It's not, I guess what I'm saying is this, like part of the reason why it's hard for me to say, you know, people say, oh, he retired or, because I still feel like, well, if I train really hard for six months, I'll I'll enter a comp. I'm not saying I'm going to win, but I'll compete. That's my mentality around it. You know, like, like Megaton, Megaton Diaz. Yeah. He, you know, to this day, I mean, not that he's winning comps, but he's like, whatever 60 and he's going in the the adult category yeah it's just more of a mentality i think that's what it is and it's it is very hard because i'm keeping myself in shape i'm i'm less injured than i've ever been but that's probably because i've done less jujitsu the problem is when you first start you get the froth and you just want to do it man injuries be damned i could have a broken ankle and a cracked rib i just want to it'll heal i want this jujitsu yeah Right. And so this is the different thing I was going to say about, uh, so you're talking about someone who's done jujitsu for maybe four or five years or whatever. And now they're confronting this lack of speed or lack of strength. And you've got to change your game. People who haven't done it before don't know any better. (laughs) So they're like maybe 30, 35. And they're just like, yeah, that frothy white belt. They want a double leg. They want to do the fireman's carry. They want to everything. And there's almost no downside for them because they're not comparing to any previous performance. No, but I think the downside is you, you are not, you've got the, the- They're still just as prone got, to injury. Yeah, yeah. You've got the young brain. Yeah. You've got the like youth mentality, but you have not got the youth on your side. No. And this is where- Yeah. But in terms of, but I think this point like about the decline in athleticism- I think that that's more of like a, it's going to be a mental hurdle you have to get over. Sure. Whereas they don't have to because they're just, they've started on the other side. Right. Kind of. Yes. I I guess then the, if we could say that the strategy for dealing with this as someone who's, if you've already done jujitsu for a period of time and you've hit your thirties and you're noticing a difference, that it needs to be more of a strategic change perhaps. Yeah. Like the way maybe it's worm guard time. Just get that gi and just wrap it around. So your no leg. one ever wants to roll with you ever again. No one then can. You never lose a round. No one can ever pass. <laughs> um, it's very efficient. Yeah, that or or like or actually like exploring like how can I slow it down? How do I how do I slow the game do you down? Mean technically, like yeah yeah what wise? yeah is it going to be a, a type of guard play or is am I you know is it more top game like when I'm coming up against someone where you know I'm I'm realizing I can't actually match. And I'm trying to match them with athleticism because that's the problem, isn't it? If you play that style of game, strength v strength, yeah, and it's someone who's stronger and more athletic, then lose. all of a sudden your game doesn't work. Yeah. So, I think if you, you know, if you're realizing that, then it's like, okay, well, what kind of game do I need to play yeah. to to make it work better for me? Sure. And that's an evol- That's where you're evolving and go. Oh, okay. It's not all about just being the fastest and going the hardest. Well, the thing I was going to say as a, like, just as an informative piece for those who are new to the game and in their 30s, your greatest problem is going to be, yeah, you don't know what you don't got, but what you're going to have pretty soon is injuries. So if you haven't spent your 20s being fit, healthy, and active, coming to this very demanding thing called BJJ in your 30s is a recipe for fucking herniated discs, 
you know, nerve damage, you know, like ligament damage, like torn meniscus. It is absolutely the fastest way to f*** yourself up in a fun way if you haven't been looking after your body. So we've got to say that like if you've had a really good athletic career, you're in great shape and you come to – like Eric, right? Yeah. Pro pro basketball player, six foot five, f***ing jacked. Handsome man. Handsome, wild. Like we'll just do a flying triangle on yeah. you. You're like, we're warming up, Eric. Like, f- slow down. <laughs> Don't dunk on me right now, okay, bro? <laughs> but, um, you know, that guy, he was used to high-level sport, is very athletic. He's a, such a f***ing handful to roll. Mm. That guy's not holding back because he's like, this is, this is, I gotta have that outlet. I gotta have that athletic outlet. Give me something. The chance of getting an injury is still there. It doesn't matter, in my opinion, whether you're someone who's pro or recreational, like you're just a couple times a week. The fact that you're just in there on the mat, you're, you're open to the injury. And, and, and if you've had this aging piece and you're feeling not as fast, not as good, and you're trying to just drive the car faster, even though the, the revs are not quite hitting where they should, um, the chance of injury is really up there. So yeah. if we don't acknowledge the decrease in athleticism and adapt, the risk of injury is higher. Yeah. That's what I would say. Yeah, and you're going to face a lot of f***ing mental anguish. Yeah. You're come back from, oh, f- it just it was a shit training. So, you know, like... It tortures you. Yeah, it can... I've seen it do that to people for years because yeah. they just refuse to go, oh, hang on, I need to change. Yeah. Yeah, and, and perspective on that. This is also not a, uh, a green light from us to cop out on being athletic. You no, s- no, no. You still need to do everything you can to, main, to build that on outside. It's just that you have to acknowledge that things are changing. So yeah, this is not do both. This is not the small violin concerto for your athletic career. I mean, that's the thing. You know, the advantage we have had is being living in the gym. Yeah. So the, that's huge. Being able to lift on a regular basis, stretch, and and have a priority. If you're in a work environment where say, you do real work, you work in a factory, or you're you're a truck driver, or a a forklift driver or something like that, you've got to sit down eight hours a day. Holy shit. You're going to feel stiff and sore just coming off the back of that, mm. let alone jujitsu, right? Um, but the next thing on this is is time. The older you get, the more competing interests there are in your life. Yeah. And there, it can be a pretty, pretty tough feeling when you feel like your life's kind of not your own. You know, you're doing stuff for your kids and you, you, your, your, your partner, your wife, your husband, they want you to do something for them. So you're like, okay, your boss asks you to stay back. You know, there's all this different stuff and you're like, when the f*** do I get to do the thing I want to do, which is jujitsu or, you know, even just hang out with your friends. You find that like before when you didn't have all this responsibility, things were very easy and now – being able to just get in your two or three sessions a week is a f-ing battle. Yeah. I mean, how, how do we deal with this? I think you need to be a lot more deliberate about it. When you're, at, when you're at that stage of life where you've got more stuff going on and time is not as easy to come by, you have to be very deliberate about it to the point of like you carve out the time in your schedule and it's the same every week and you make an agreement with your partner or your boss or whoever it is that, is also, that you're also competing with you yeah. know, that's also competing for that it's time. Demanding. And you say, hey, look, this thing's really important to me. I need to do this three times a week or whatever. Um, what, are the, what are the sessions that work best? Okay, I can go these two nights and on a Saturday. Like that's, that's what I, that's, yeah. you know, what I do with, with my partner, right, with Misa. Um, and then once it's carved out and I've had that conversation, I don't feel guilty then when I'm like, hey, I'm leaving the house on a Saturday. You're doing the same. To, yeah, to go. I, I still don't always train on a Saturday because I often find a reason to not go. Sure. But yeah, I think you have to you have to be very deliberate about it. Whereas when you're a bit younger, you just kind of go whenever you want to go. Yeah, like, oh, like I'll go tonight. Ah, I go tomorrow night too. Yeah, or like you know? I'll skip today. I'll just go twice tomorrow. Yeah, you've got flexibility. Yeah, so you you don't you may not put the same premium on the thing, and and this is the thing I was going to say, which you know I've heard this a lot through clients, um, through my experience as a personal trainer, where people are like they shortchange themselves because they think by people pleasing or keeping promises to others and kind of breaking promises to themselves that, oh, they're a good person. No, that's not true. Actually, what you're doing is you're fueling a whole bunch of uh, kind of self-loathing and 
uh, lack of confidence because you are not keeping your promise to yourself. That's the problem. Because when you look in the mirror, you're like, I didn't, I really just wanted to do that thing. And I just, actually, there's nothing stopping you. You were scared that maybe your wife or your boss or whoever would go, you can't do that. It's like, well, this is my mental health. I need to do this thing for me. You want me to be a good husband. You want me to be a good father. You want me to be a good employee. Let me take care of my fucking self and I'll take care of the fucking job. So this is the thing that we don't keep the discipline around it that you must, self-respect comes from keeping promises to yourself. If you promise yourself to go to the fucking gym, it doesn't matter how cold it is, how shit you feel, you must go do the thing. Because if going to the gym was based on how you felt beforehand, no one would go. No one would go. You can Because it's the after. That's where the win is. You know, obviously there's value in the struggle of doing it, but getting there is what it is. And I, I feel like you've got to really not budge on that. Like, like Joe said, carve out the time and f- stick to that mother. Yeah, I, I can't, a, a, um, a, an alternative view on that for me sometimes is I won't necessarily, like I'll be like, now's my time. But sometimes I know, I think this is maybe what we were talking about before. Um, I train at lunchtimes, Tuesday, Thursday, nice. but sometimes work is so hectic and I'm, I'm, I'm in a groove momentum and I'm like, I'm actually just going to keep working. Go do the work. Yeah, I'm like, because I know that mentally what's going to make me feel better is not having this work that I didn't do sure. looming over my head. Oh yeah. But then sometimes I know mentally what's going to, what's going to, what's going to suck is not having gone to jujitsu. Yeah. But I'm now at a point, I think where I can, where I can view it in that way and I can know what I need. Sure. You know, sometimes it's more work, sometimes it's more jujitsu. And so it, I think it's okay to like skip a session in that regard, Yeah, but it's, but it's still being deliberate and having that time carved out that I, matters. I think what I'm speaking to there is more about having the conversation. Yes. That, that people feel like, Oh, like it feels like a hard conversation. Like, uh, I don't want to bring this up with whoever it Significant is. Significant other. Yeah, to, 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 to feel like, oh, I'm being selfish when I say this. Or yeah. I'm, I'm a bad person to say, I'm not going to do that at that time. I need to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, and, I, and I think people are very uh, conditioned to not ask for themselves. And, 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 and it seems selfish when you've got all these other responsibilities to say, oh, I want to go roll around on the floor with my mates. But that could be the super high leverage activity that makes, you know how we, feel, you know how oh, it yeah, feels. You can't, I mean, Post I, roll, the stress goes away, right? If I train on a Saturday, I come home, I'm a fucking legend. Yeah. I bring some bagels home for lunch. Yeah, you know. Get some coffees from the shop. I'm like in a super good mood. Yeah, you Whereas vibing. if I don't do some training, I'm like, oh, I really wish I had a train today. Yeah, you get a little bit more niggly. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I think, I know, I know that of myself that uh, really, and Ola too, she knows that she's like, just go train. Yeah, she's like, Better for you're unbearable. <laughs> just f- off and go to training. She knows when I come back, I'll be like, yeah, I'll unpack the dishwasher, whatever you need. Like, you know, I'm good. Like mentally, chemically, everything's like, I'm so much more easygoing because I've had that opportunity to just be myself. Yeah. Now, recovery, because that's, that's the killer. I think this is where you start to really notice it. I mean, people talk about, oh, my, my hormone profile is diminishing. Well, look, blah, blah, blah. There's, there's a lot of different stuff out there. Unless you've gone and had your testosterone checked and you know what your fucking markers are, don't talk that. But, but it's also bullshit because you probably don't sleep enough, probably don't eat well enough. So, of course, your hormones are going to look like shit. Yeah, that's like, right. And again, you got away with like your hormones and everything. Like You still had plenty of testosterone or whatever, like through your 20s, despite all of your bad behavior. Yeah. Now, it's, now you can't get away with it. So don't blame them. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's think this. You've uh, worked, you've done a day, a day in the life of. You've got to jitsu at jujitsu at night. You had hard rolls, great times. Got home a bit late. Smashed some food in. Few emails. Got to bed a bit late. Maybe on red on, tube. Maybe on YouTube. Red tube. Whatever whatever tube you're into. Uh, you know, fallen asleep in front of TV. You know, collapsed with with your partner. Whatever. You wake oh, up. This is dreamy. I don't know. Is this a day in the life of JT? Or what's no, going on? No, no, there's nothing like me. I'm just a hypothetical. I'm trying to be relatable. Here. Okay, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I get I get home at one a.m. after my third job for the day. No, you don't want that shit. Um, 
But here's the thing. You wake up the next day and you feel... You're so sore. You get out of bed. You don't feel rested. The, the fingers are aching. The back is sore. Your neck is jacked. Oh, wow. You've got bruises. You're not... How the f*** did I... What's this? It's not a hickey. I don't think so. I wasn't rolling with weird Mike. Um, so it, you're like, what's going on? And then that next day... You try and do it again, but you have this cumulative negative spiral of you're not recovering, you're not sleeping enough, the food wasn't right, and your body is just not recovering from your day as a human and jujitsu. The recovery piece. When you start Googling, where can I buy Tren? <laughs> T R T. <laughs> Derek, plate for more days. Yeah. What? Wait, where can I get this subscription? Testosterone yeah. therapy. I'm doing everything I need to. Sleep's not very good. Diet's a bit shitty. I'm un, I'm not hydrated, but everything else is on point. Yeah. Just want to know where I can get some Diana Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on my Diana Bowl. So uh, a good friend of mine, I, we did a video about this ages ago. My mate Paul was like, yo, is there any like healthy steroids? I was like, what? So Paul's an artist. He's a rock star. He's a rock star of a human. This guy has done anything. He'd lick a poisonous frog from the Amazon. He's on it. You uh -huh. know, like he's Paul lives life to the fullest. He, you know, he'd be out all night, be on a bender, go to kickboxing class, doing yoga. Like the guy's a thousand percent. And I said to him, hang on. All right. So you asked me about steroids. How's your sleep going? Oh, he's like, I haven't slept for three days. And I'm like, right. How's your diet going? Uh, haven't been eating that much lately. Okay. All right. Cool. So here's the deal. He was like, I really struggle to put on muscle. I'm like, yeah, because your, 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 you know, your metabolism's on a thousand percent cocaine metabolism. <laughs> like you're just, you're running on energy that's synthetic. It's not real. Uh, you got to slow down. You got to sleep. You got to eat. And, and like, thankfully to this day, dude's turned it around. He does eat. He does sleep. He's heaps boring now though. <laughs> so no fun to be around. No, it's not, it's not party times. But that's what I wanted to say. If we think about most people, they don't think of food as recovery. They think of an ice bath. You know, they're like, oh, yo, but yeah. I hit the sauna right after I had my I did my, I did my Wim Hof. I did my Wim Hof. Yeah. But, you know, like. But I still feel like shit. Yeah, it's, it's this feeling terrible and not knowing how to counter it. Have you felt that uh, yeah. under-recovered? Yeah, off. Uh, all the time. It's. I had two glasses of uh, two glasses of wine last night, or a glass and a half. It would get you, which is not a usual thing for me during the week. No. But I woke up this morning, I'm like, I felt that. Yeah. I was waking up throughout the night. I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have had that fucking wine. It messes with you, right? So delicious. I was making a nice dinner. Had an Ooh. open bottle left from the weekend. It's like, mm. oh, cultural. Every, no one was home for a little bit. Yeah. So I was like, oh, just me in the he house. Had his podcast. On. Oh yeah. Filming for the for the Find Eat to Win shit. Nation. Yeah. Yeah, I think in the same way of the like the injury and all that stuff, it's it's recovery is now something that you have to take seriously. Yep. And when we say recovery, it's not like yeah, it's not ice bath, it's not float tank necessarily. Sure, you can use those things, but arguably it's it's the the, the real foundation, which is sleep, nutrition, hydration, right? Like even um, even like managing training volume, not mm. training too much. That's part of your recovery strategy, yeah. right? It's strategy. It's not like have this shit written down, but you, ju you just have to take that stuff seriously because you got to understand like you're now living a really busy, hectic life and everything's competing for time and attention and all that shit takes bandwidth yeah. physically and mentally. And that is sort of your cumulatively, that's energy. Yeah. And if you just like, you don't have enough energy to do all of that stuff yeah. and also be underrested and underfed and yeah. hung over from the weekend and you know yeah i i think some people can get away with that shit and we tend to look at that like there's a guy i know we train with advantage who's always ripping it up big nights that kind of thing yeah. he shows up training super happy he gets after it big sweat out yeah You're like yeah okay you get away with that for a while but there's going to be other areas of life where that dude's struggling i'm sure of course uh, and then he'll be paying a price in right now in terms of maybe jujitsu development or whatever it is right yeah um i think you just you got to take that stuff seriously you don't have the luxury of being haphazard about it whereas in your 20s kind of can i could yeah go train and then go to the pub for dinner smash a few beers get sure. up early the next morning go run the beach go train jujitsu again like it, it it doesn't work like that it now. wasn't a factor and yeah. i think um a great metaphor which i learned from paul check was saying that like your health 
is the foundation for your performance. So you can think of it as a building, as a tree, whatever, however you want to think about it. But if your health isn't, if you're not, health will give you a broad base. If you're not healthy, your base is shorter, so you can only build so high. If you've got that short base, you try to build too high, the shit is going to fall over. You can't have big performance without having a good, healthy base. But it's a very confronting thing when you try and say to someone, hey, you, ne- you need to probably change your lifestyle a bit. Yeah. If you want to do better in these other things, you can't just, yeah, but if I just buy another Gordon Ryan DVD, surely I'll get better. I got his mindset um. DVD. <laughs> like, it's just like, you got to go, all right, it's, you, people will say, yeah, but it's hard. Yes. It is hard. It is Life's hard. hard. But if you <laughs> want to feel better, you got to do the other things which will support it. Yeah. I think this is the thing that it's kind of part of growing up, right? You know, you might have avoided your taxes in your 20s. <laughs> you know, you might have, you know, avoided going to the dentist or whatever. It's like you hit 30 and that shit hits you fucking hard. The people who do better are the ones who took care of business earlier. That's not to say, all right, you're done now, but it's like, all right, you want to get a home loan? You better get your fucking credit in check. That's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh shit, I don't have a credit rating. Oh my God, this is a problem. It's actually you weird. You told him you got the podcast though, right? Pardon? You told him you got the podcast. Oh, of course. I don't have a credit right. rating, but look at these stats. Wait, have you seen my blue tick? Like, yeah. <laughs> have you seen that I'm monetized on YouTube? I can <laughs> like and subscribe. Um, it's one of those things. I'm getting all the loans agents. You probably know show. someone who knows someone who knows someone that listens to our show. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the, the loans guy's like, bulletproof? Not approved. <laughs> Cancel me out. Love the show though. Yeah. Keep up the work. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, it's one of those things that- um, I think it, you, you gotta it have- it hasn't been brought to your attention, Yeah. It, you know, you, you're blind to it. Yeah. And I think that, that with all of this stuff, it's about having systems in place. Yes. And often we don't when we're younger because you just don't have to. Yep. Because you don't, it's not a problem. You have kind of endless energy. You have endless time. I mm. think back to my trains, I'm like, even though I was really busy, I had a lot of time. Yep. You know, and you have, you just, like all of that stuff, there's just more space. Whereas when, you, when you're in your 30s, you got less energy for things, you got less bandwidth for things. And if you don't have systems in place, it's really hard to get those, like systems for, I sit down and do my tax every year. Yeah, exactly. Right? Or systems for, this is how I plan my training out in my calendar every yep. week. Yep. Um, whereas if you got, you look at people who have the systems like yourself, you have a system for doing your strength training, a system for stretching. It's now easy for you to do that. Yes. And people look at that and go, man, I wish I could have that. Of course, it's, if, you, if you're coming from a place of not having a system, it's hard, but you can build it. Yes. It's going to be a little period of like effort. Yeah. But once you got that thing up and running, it's pretty easy to maintain. It's so worthwhile. And like, you know, like the biggest thing for me, uh, back in like 2019 was like getting a good accountant you know like i'm not i shouldn't i should not be responsible for handling that shit i need to get an expert and i need to pay that fucking money and it is such a relief i don't have to fucking think about it i just call up for me yo what's going on what do you need here's the things tell me how much money there it is yeah you know same thing like accountability like having someone who helps you if you know you you're someone who needs a bit of help get that help you know like i think it's this is where we come back to a certain amount of humility and that's you know they always talk about it in jujitsu but it's just like being able to admit when you don't know something or you need help and then getting that help um it can make such a difference to uh, you just having a better life damn right cool there it is catch you next time fam peace